is out of the 125 pound weight class. Standing five foot eight inches tall, fighting out of Team Rock Harrisburg. Please oh, welcome Sebastian Quirino. That's the next evolution of these uh, fight teams and promotions. You're seeing the promoters keep these fight, uh, fighters in, like uh, Cuevedo. He's coming in young. He's doing the kickboxing. And now they're growing up to do MMA as an amateur, even grow into a pro with the promotion. Grow with the promotion. Yeah, I mean, that's what's so interesting about Fightport, right? Is that we get to see these guys from all stages, you know? Yeah, I've heard, I heard some negative comments about that, but I actually like it. Because oh, like looking from the same pool. Oh yeah, they figured that um, you know these guys don't fight anywhere else, and that's not necessarily true. Um, I, I like the fact that you're able to build your name somewhere. You yeah, I mean a lot of these guys have. I mean, fight for it's not around every month either. You know, a lot of these the guys that want to fight other places can go uh, find and his opponent fight. fighting out of the blue corner, five foot five inches tall, with a record of a one and zero, oh, fighting out of Jim O. Please oh, welcome Arturo Castillo. I like the fact that Fight for It also has a relationship with Titans of the Cage. You see their fighters, see their staff work back and forth. They support one another. Here's the Prince Hamed Thomas again, full and coachy duty. Thanks. I know we're throwing gym names around, but some of the, some of the hometown guys tonight, some of the elevate guys tonight, you know, some, some of the teams I like. Great to have them here as well. Box the Modern Warrior, Rockstar Keith Richardson. Arturo Castillos in the blue versus Sebastian Cavado in the red. Big fan of Cavado. Always interested to see a Jimmo fighter make it a debut. Or actually, this is his second fight. I didn't see his first one. Big takedown. Big, big takedown for Arturo. Moving into mount. Wow. Effortlessly moved into mount there, too. Made it look easy. Obviously, the wrestling skill is apparent. Isolating the arm, too. Doing a good job on dealing with the defense. Wow, Cavado keeps it moving though. That's what you really gotta do against the strong upper body grapplers is you gotta make them remember they have legs. Every time I'm up against a strong wrestler that's trying to do that, I always, I always cook them with the heel hook. I always make them remember that I can attack their legs because they never think about it until they get to that blue belt, high blue belt, purple belt level. Now Arturo's not gonna not gonna get his legs involved again. He's gonna turn Sebastian over, stepping over into mount again. Cavado using a lot of explosive movements to try to get around the mount right here, but you can't you can't really explode your way out against a guy who's stronger than you. It looks like Arturo's just a little stronger physically. Yeah, but he's content to just grapple him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw how that went last time. Yeah. Both these guys, really young kids. I think, I think Cavado might be 18 or 19 at most. Looking for a head and arm by Arturo. Ooh. Interesting defense by Cavado. Looks like he's trying to build, yep, trying to swing that windshield wiper, that arm in front of the head. 
He's almost he's almost free of the threat of that, but Arturo just seems to effortlessly kind of slide it back up every time he almost loses it. At what point do you think the ref just says, you know, okay, now we've got a little bit more action? It's it's very different in out in back control than it would be in any other position, right? Right. Cavado has moved to a guard now. It's got to be really stale to get stood up from from now. And he's trying to punch from the bottom. I feel like you punch from the bottom, you can get up. If you punch hard. Unless you punch if hard, you, yeah. If you're, yeah, if you punch hard, your punches can't be ignored. You know, Chael Sonnen once famously said that the hardest he was ever punched in any fight was by Damian Maya from the bottom. Damian's my hero. So I'll take it from Chael. They've given him instructions to keep it standing. To work the angle. He, uh, Clavedo is the taller fighter, so. And he's got more kickboxing experience. Well, it's not going to be the easiest thing he's ever done in his life, keeping it standing against this guy, let me tell you. Well, here's the thing. You just survived that guy's grappling, so it kind of gives you a little bit of confidence that you can you can work your game now. Uh, maybe. I find that, especially when it comes to the top-heavy wrestling, it's cumulative, right? So every time you survive, it gets harder to survive it again, yeah, especially when you're giving away your secrets. But he didn't get beat up. No, but he gave away a lot of his secrets. And that's what grappling is about sometimes, is getting people to expose their, their secrets so that next time you have them in that position, you finish them instead. I'm sure striking, is, striking you can say the same thing about. Oh, Taco Hale just oh, got his own strikes. Arturo said, you know what, I'll, I'll stay in and bang for a minute, too. Why not? He's got that. <laughs> Trying to turn his hips away from Arturo there. Cavado walking up now. Nice, fight the hands on the way up. He's got to get a hook in or something. He's got to get an underhook in. He's got to fight the hands. Right up against that cage door. He kind of complied right there. <laughs> As you eloquently put it earlier, he's getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting sleepy. You know. Because hoping the, the, the guy taking you down gets tired from taking you down is not a good strategy, so. No, you can't Homer Simpson your way out of these ones. Going for a switch. If you want to go for the crack, like, I, I think that Cavado is going for the crackdown defense over and over again, which is good, but you have to get over the back leg first. You can't go under first because you just make it easier to get taken down. Now, one of the things that Sebastian could have done was when he's wrapping around his waist and hips, pull his elbows up to bring him up a little higher, and then we back to the inside. He's gonna have to attack. He can't be content with just using guard method. Uh, yeah. He's definitely. gonna have to attack. Yeah, and Arturo's very systematic. Arturo's approach to every position is very, one, two, three steps. One, two, three. One, two, three. He doesn't cheat anything. He doesn't take shortcuts. And that's why he's able to so consistently get dominant positions. He doesn't try to jump for anything. Yep. He works to get everything. I like those little token body shots. Dude. Just enough for the referee to leave him alone. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Especially when it comes to that side control position. You got to, you know, Pons is calling for work. But it's like, for me, as long as you're doing something from the mount, you're doing work. Right. It, it, it is on it, the onus is on this other guy here to get out of this dominant position. Ten seconds left. Arturo is going to spark him here. Cavado tries one last explosion to get out of there by uh, Spider-Man walking off the post. I don't like to see that either. That's not a good amount of escape. Now, one thing I'll point out is that Cavado did have a really great 
tipping Mount Escape into a, a leg lock entry earlier. That's true. I think that's one of the strongest MMA Mount Escapes that there are right now. Um, I think that obviously leg locks are still catching up to usefulness in MMA, but it's pretty uh, it's pretty devastating, uh, you know, obviously when you can get that heel hook in. Especially at the amateur level here where a lot of people have never even dealt with a lead lock in the training room. Here in South Carolina, do we allow the straight or the heel hook? Everything's go everything goes on subs. Okay. You just can't knee people in the head. Take or elbow. But if you want to rip their knee out of socket, that's cool. <laughs> just don't cut them with an elbow on the way to it. <laughs> Arturo's physically very appropriately in this weight class. He's big for this size. And I like the way he takes the distance. He steals the moment to move in closer. So very has... beautiful wrestling. I mean, honestly, the, the wrestling display from Arturo Castillos is, uh, is brutal. Stuffing, snake, snake telling Cavado to stuff that Kimura between his legs and then rip, and that's sound advice. Very nice. Almost got the back take, but the hip switch that wrestlers are so capable of. They, in wrestling, there's this big mentality of your back can never touch the mat, or you like morally lose the exchange, as well as opening yourself up to being pinned. Right. So a lot of times when wrestlers back touch the mats, they instantly come alive. You know, they they become like impossibly hard to hold down. Not only we have Turo to start threatening head and arm, whether to get it or not, get him to change his position. And then he's going to advance them out again. Yeah, and there's so much more that comes from that wrap around the head, especially when you dig it into the armpit. We see him, when he's not pulling on the head, he's digging it into the armpit and using it to steer Cavado around. And it's just like been easier and easier for him every round to get to and hold mount. The bass just got to, as you kept putting it adequately with, he's missing steps. You know, he's trying to do certain things, but he's missing the steps to, to, uh, to get a upa, to sprint to the guard. He's missing those steps. And he should go grappling heavy because uh, Atul's not the strongest striker. So he could push on the hips the way he uh, normally would. Mm. But he's worried about getting hit at all. Let's see, Rick. But again, he, he does one movement, stops. Mm. It's got to be the second, third movement. That's got to offset. Yeah, yeah. I, I was actually just talking to my coach, Cody, about that. We were rolling, and he was like, the way I consistently beat you is you achieve, you make one achievement, and then you kind of stop and pause. And then you kind of reorganize and then go for the next thing. Watch these strikes behind the head. And we are going to run out of time. <laughs> with a little showmanship. <laughs> Arturo Castillo's dominance in that fight. Cavado in his MMA debut comes up just a little short, in my opinion. Young kid, though, still has a lot of time to figure it out. And we know that he's capable as a fighter from his, from his kickboxing experience. Just was one step behind in the grappling in this fight. Yeah. And even just motion that close. Yeah. That close. I don't think that Kimura was close at, at any point, but if he, if it helps him deal with this fight. Then well, I, I, he might be implying there's, you know, a little bit more work as well. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, I think the only time he was threatening any legitimate attack. Fighters, like center of the cage. Judges' decision is in. Your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the blue corner. Arturo Castillos. Arturo Castillos, 2-0.
as an amateur MMA fighter here now, fighting out of Jim O. Very physically fit and strong young man with a clear talent for wrestling, a very clear and evident talent for wrestling and grappling. Shout outs to the Elevate fight team over at 864, 4-0 as a team tonight. Nice. On the 864 fighting championships. Is that here in South Carolina as well? Yeah, it's in Greenville. Enough fans to go around for everybody. True, that's true. Greenville's a great town. I, I'd love to. I'd love to call a fight for 864. 